Immediately under the measure key is the control key. The control key is the key you will use to place the instrument into the control mode so that as you enter new values we will go to those values. The vent key is to allow us to take the instrument back down to ground level or ambient pressure whenever we wish. The leak key is the key that we will use when we want to carry out a proper leak test having switched off the controller and use the inbuilt stopwatch feature of the test set. The QC and PT key enables us to change the display from looking at the delta P associated with airspeed or looking at the pitot absolute pressure. It's a toggle switch and we'll describe it more in a moment. And the altitude rate and airspeed rate key enables us to change our rate from either looking at altitude rate in feet per minute, for example, or airspeed in knots per minute, or indeed, under another control mode, to actually look at pressure units per minute. The digit key here will describe as we go on. It enables us to change the values very quickly. We have two keys here for negotiating our cursor on the front panel from all the different points that we wish to address. We have also two triangular keys here which gives us opportunities to change functions and the all important enter key exactly as used on a PC front panel. So there's the description of the keypad now let's consider the actual display. Maybe initially it looks very busy complicated but it really isn't if you understand so let's try with a, an explanation. We have four lines of information, but let's think of it as three columns. An altitude column, or static pressure, an airspeed column, or pitot pressure, and finally rate and Mach. So, on the very first line, against the word simulated, in other words actual, the pressure existing in the system at the moment is apparently equal to 239 feet altitude. The airspeed is equivalent to zero knots and the altitude rate is effectively zero because we're not going anywhere. Immediately under the simulated line is the command line. This is the line which enables you to call for a new value. So the command of altitude is exactly the same as the simulated actual value as we would expect, similarly with airspeed. Not so on rate, the command value is 3000 and will be the value by default when you turn on the instrument until you give it an altitude and tell it to move. The final two lines, simulated and command, are precisely the same situation as the first two, but now they are in pressure units instead of aeronautical engineering units. Now we have the same values displayed in inches of mercury, which at the moment is default on this instrument, although we have many alternatives and we will show you those soon. So here we have the fact that apparently 239 feet altitude is equivalent to 29.663 inches of mercury. Okay, let's actually ask it to do something. We have the cursor adjacent to the altitude channel and I can now enter into this command line the new value I would like to go to. Let's say we press 2 and 1000, a lazy man's 1000, and press enter. Immediately that is the value we wish to achieve at the ports and to the aircraft and we will now go at this rate of 3000 feet per minute from the ground level figure we were to the 2,000 feet that we've requested. By pressing the movement cursor key I can address the airspeed of command value and ask for example 150 knots. There we are, we are now going to go to 2,000 feet and 150 knots. By default, as I've already mentioned, the altitude rate of change is 3000 feet per minute and you can change this just as you wish and the default for speed is 300 knots per minute.
And again, you can change it whenever you wish. The instrument is going to go closer and closer to the desired value and then slow down to ensure that we don't have more overshoot than necessary. Ideally, of course, zero, and generally speaking, we will have zero overshoot. So here we are, asked for 2,000 feet, we've reached 2,000, and we have an overshoot of just one foot, well inside the requirements for hysteresis testing on aircraft instruments. Similarly, we're coming to the desired value on the airspeed. You may be able to hear gently via the sound system, there is also an audible beep which gives you a warning that you're coming now to the values that you asked for. So here we are. We've asked for 2,000, we've arrived. We've asked for 150 knots, we've arrived. Now in this situation, you might well decide on the aircraft that it's time now to carry out a leak test to make sure that everything is leak tight. For that, we have, as we mentioned earlier, the leak key. When we press the leak key, the display changes its arrangement. It continues to show you the altitude and airspeed and MAC simulated values, but the top two lines are now changed and show you in seconds the time elapsed from the moment I press the leak test key, and then the altitude rate in feet per minute and the airspeed rate in knots per minute being calculated on an ongoing basis. So here we are, 30 seconds into our leak test, and apparently we have a leak rate of 9 feet per minute, and an airspeed rate, uh, rate leak of 0 0.1 knots per minute. If your particular aircraft test routine calls for you to do a leak test over a set period of time, that's no problem. You could leave the seconds until, for example, it's gone for 60 seconds, and then you have the answer for your one minute test. It is a fact that when you change the values inside the pipework to the pitostatic probes on the aircraft, you do get heating taking place of the pressures. This can be interpreted as a leak and occasionally gives you erroneous answers. So it's always sensible, perhaps when you've done a one minute test, to repress the leak test which restarts the timer and enables you to get a true value of the leak with no influence from the actual temperature change which is taking place inside the instruments, inside the pipework. Okay, so that's how we have the leak test. To come out of that, we press control or halt or measure any of the keys to get back into the normal operating mode. Now you did see a few moments ago that when I input the values, I was in the control mode and I first introduced the altitude, pressed the enter key and everything began to change. Fine and then I went on to do the airspeed. If there is a situation where you would like to input the altitude and the airspeed and then both begin to start simultaneously, that's okay, you can do that. Then how you do it is to go to the measure mode. When we press the measure key, the word measure comes up in the bottom right hand corner, taking place of the Mach value, and we can now move our cursor back to altitude, enter 4,000 feet, nothing changes. Move the cursor to airspeed and enter 250 knots, enter, nothing's changed until I now select the control key. The moment I select the control key, those values will now become the operative values and we will go to those starting at exactly the same moment. Now, we've not spoken so far about the corner here where we have the Mach value indicated. We've asked for 4,000 feet altitude, we've asked for 250 knots airspeed, and when we arrive at those values, the command value here for Mach tells me that we will be at a Mach of 0 0.405. Fine. As you probably know, very well, the 
relationship between altitude and airspeed is constantly changing in terms of Mach value. So if we were now to change the altitude, the Mach value would change. So if you need to hold a value of Mach, you must make sure that you input it when you've already got your desired altitude value. Okay, so now with our values at 4,000 feet altitude, 250 knots, Mach of 0 0.405, if I now go back to altitude and make that 5,000 feet, you see that the Mach number immediately changes to 0.413. And we have the situation where the original Mach has changed. If you wanted to go back to Mach, you must cycle the cursor through to the Mach value and enter the 0 0.408, I think we were, of a few moments ago. And that will then change the airspeed to give us Mach 0.408 at the new altitude of 5,000 feet. Okay, that's enough on the Mach for a moment or two. Let's think perhaps of uh, how we enter the values. You notice when I have my cursor against the altitude command value of 5,000 feet, there is a digit flashing. The five digit is flashing. And this is a very useful feature available on the MPS31C with the digit key here. It means that I can address any one of those digits, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, or even ten thousands. And when I then press this up key, I change the value to 6,000, or I change the value to 7,000, etc. And I can go down from 5,000 to 4,000, 3,000. And with the digit key, pressing the digit key enables me to actually address any one of the units, the tens, or the hundreds. So this means that if you're doing a test which calls for step testing at set distances apart, for example every 1,000 feet, as with the FAR 43 altimeter test demanded by the FAA, this is a very useful feature to step you through. And this can be used on any of the command values. So, at the moment we've been looking at altitude in feet, airspeed in knots, and we have the display of our pressure units in inches of mercury. You might want to change these. If you did, you go to the limits units key. When I press this, the display changes entirely. It now says altitude max, A-L-M-X, altitude max is 50,000 feet. Altitude minimum is minus 1,500 feet. Airspeed maximum 150 and maximum Mach 1.00 Mach. The altitude rate maximum is set at 6,000 feet per minute. I could change any of those if I wanted to, either for this one test, or if you read the handbook, it teaches you through how to change them permanently. So that if in your country you always work in meters altitude and in hectopascals pressure, that's no problem. It can all be set up. For now, let's just demonstrate by changing perhaps the pressure units. So I cycle around my cursor until I'm looking at measurement units. Feet, do I want to change it? No. Knots, do I want to change it? No. Inches of mercury, yes, let's change it. So I press the up arrow here and I can have millimeters of mercury, PSI, pascals, kilopascals, or hectopascals. I think we'll go with hectopascals. So we press that key, we come out of the limits, and now you see that all the engineering units are now described in hectopascals. Or if you're as old as I am, you'll know that hectopascals is precisely the same as millibars, fortunately. So, a quite a useful feature, and you can change these whenever you wish. No problem at all.